A better future. One where you are in control of what happens to you. A future where you get what you want with the power of manifestation and the law of attraction. Just imagine what that might mean for you. Better relationships, greater abundance, unlimited prosperity, an occupation that makes your heart sing with joy, fulfillment on every level of your soul, radiant health, personal power, and the knowledge that you're living your true purpose. Does that sound too good to be true? Fact is, those are the results of manifesting what you want. And anyone can do it, including you. Yes, you can manifest exactly what you want in your life, provided you know a few simple things about how manifestation works. You see, you don't get something for nothing. You have to put out some energy into the universe before it will respond to your desires and wishes. And you must set your goals and objectives and be prepared to take some action to move you in their general direction. But I know you wouldn't be whacking this unless you were dedicated to massively improving your life and making it into something that really gives you satisfaction and joy. Of course, your manifestation goals and objectives might be more modest. Perhaps all you want is to improve your financial situation somewhat, get a better job, or have a better relationship with your partner and children. Well, so be it. There is no universal law which says you have to use manifestation to become a Mother Teresa, a Bill Gates, a Richard Branson, a Nelson Mandela, a Hillary Clinton, or an Angela Merkel. And indeed, most of us probably wouldn't want to do that, even if it were possible. So it really doesn't matter what the scale of your objectives may be. Large or small, life-changing or life-enhancing, you can achieve whatever you want with the power of manifestation. How Manifestation Works Napoleon Hill was writing about manifestation as far back as 1937. You may have heard of his famous book, Think and Grow Rich. But there's plenty of evidence that civilizations knew about the power of the human mind to create reality for many generations before that. The difference is that in the past, this knowledge was always kept secret by shamans, medicine men, wise women, priests, and witch doctors. No wonder, when you think about it, because manifestation has the power to change lives beyond recognition. And it's right that nowadays this information is available to each and every one of us. Of course, in the past, experts in creating reality, what we would now call manifestation, didn't really know how it works, and they tended to end up attributing the appearance of what they wanted in their lives either to prayer or to the intervention of God. Nowadays, we know a lot more about how the universe works, so we can make some suggestions about the nature of manifestation. For example, atomic science has shown us that all matter is simply energy. It's a paradox that things which appear solid are when you get down to the atomic level, just a form of pure energy. That's because atoms can take the form of solid particles or energy. And it's the interchange of energy and matter which could be at the root of our ability to manifest things in our world. The term manifestation simply means to create reality or to bring something into being. People talk about manifestation in different ways, but what it really means is the act of creating or acquiring things or changing the world around you with the power of your mind. So you might want to manifest physical objects like a new car or a new house. You might want to manifest greater prosperity or better health or abundant joy. Or perhaps you want to manifest a loving relationship or some great vision you have. A lot of people like to talk about the concept of co-creation. This recognizes the fact that you don't manifest anything alone. Somehow, somewhere, the universe is involved in co-creating your reality with you. For those of a religious nature, the universe probably means God. Co-creation probably means prayer. For other people, the universe can mean things like cosmic consciousness, or universal intelligence, or the universal mind, or infinite intelligence. Other people talk about the great mystery or the oneness. In a way, it doesn't matter what framework of beliefs you put on to manifestation, because all of these ideas are fundamentally the same. 
They recognize that our minds can communicate with something bigger than ourselves. In short, we can communicate in some way with the universe beyond our minds and bodies, and by doing so, we can impel the universe to change the reality around us. Thoughts are some kind of energy, an energy which can go out into the universe and connect in some way with universal intelligence, or whatever term you want to use to refer to the power bigger than us, and influence it so that something changes in our lives. And if everything is known to the universal intelligence, or God, then it follows that if you communicate with it in the right way asking, let's say, for greater prosperity, then the universal intelligence already knows exactly how to manifest that for you. We'll come back to this point later, because it's very important, but the essence of manifestation is that you don't need to know how something is going to appear in your life. All you need to know is what you want, not how to get it. When manifestation fails, limiting beliefs. Of course, many people fail to manifest anything. Although you may find that hard to hear, it's an obvious fact. If manifestation was simple, people would be a lot happier, a lot less stressed, in better relationships, earning a lot more money, and living more joyous lives. So it's very interesting to look at the reasons why people fail to manifest successfully. Some people simply don't know what they want, or they keep changing their minds. Other people start enthusiastically with some clear objective in mind, but then get distracted by the demands of everyday life and can't sustain the level of energy needed to create change in their lives. Others don't have sufficient desire for change. They are half-hearted about what they want. Some can't be bothered to consistently use the techniques that will create a different life. But more than anything else, people hold limiting beliefs about themselves, which stop them moving from where they are to somewhere better. We will look at all these issues as we go through the techniques of manifestation, including how you can free yourself of limitations and make it possible to manifest absolutely anything, at least anything you can believe in. As Napoleon Hill said, what the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. How very true. The law of attraction, by the way, is what people think of as the controlling principle of manifestation. The simplest way to explain the law of attraction is this. Like attracts like. I think we all know that instinctively. There are many sayings in our everyday lives that sum up that principle. Misery loves company. Birds of a feather flock together. Like attracts like. And so on. That's no surprise. You don't have to be any kind of nuclear scientist to understand why, like attracts like. If you're sending out negative energy, you won't attract somebody who is really positive by nature. If you send out negative energy, you'll attract negative people to yourself. But if you surround yourself with positive people, you will always feel yourself infused with positive energy and inspiration. However, the law of attraction works more subtly than you might think. When you set an objective and you focus your mind on that objective, in the way we're going to discuss in a moment, you start to send out energy into the universe at a particular frequency of vibration, a certain energetic level. And, provided you're sending out the right level of energy, that's what you will attract back to you in physical form. Have you ever wondered why people in abusive relationships seem to step from one disastrous encounter to another. It's because the energy they're sending out is attracting people on the same level of energy back to them. To change this dynamic, they need to change the beliefs they hold about themselves, which almost certainly reflect a low sense of self-esteem or self-worth, so that they radiate a higher, a more positive form of energy. And then, almost miraculously, the kind of people who start entering their lives will change for the better. 
Equally, you may know people whose financial situation is disastrous, and no matter what they do to change it, no matter how intelligent they are, no matter how competent and skilled in life, they lurch from one financial crisis to the next. Again, this is because the beliefs they hold about themselves are expressed at a certain energetic level, and the law of attraction means that the universe has no option in the matter but to reflect that energy back to them by recreating similar situations over and over again. Now, you don't need to know any more about the law of attraction than those few sentences to be able to manifest whatever you want successfully. But it's true, you may have to do some things, starting by looking at and change some of the limiting beliefs which hold you back from achieving success and manifesting things successfully. Over the years I've been studying manifestation, I have come to understand the single most important thing causing people to fail at manifestation is that they have limiting beliefs about what they can achieve. I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? Take money! Probably the most common reason why people start using the law of attraction. Almost every one of us would say we want more money. So how come 99% of people in the world remain dissatisfied with how much money they are making? Why is it so many people find it so difficult to manifest abundance? Over and over again, I have heard people set financial goals and objectives and then try to manifest them. Quite often, I hear people say things like, I'm going to have one million in my bank account by the end of next year. Unfortunately, no matter how hard they try, nothing much changes. The reason for this is simple. When you start asking them about the beliefs they hold about themselves, you find out pretty quickly they have a very clear mental picture of exactly what they believe they are worth in financial terms. And most people don't believe they're worth anything like $1 million. That's why they can't create it. They hold limiting beliefs about their earning ability. Now you might say, if the law of attraction really worked, then people could create as much wealth and abundance as they wanted, regardless of the beliefs they hold about themselves. And in fact, a lot of people who have written about the law of attraction have implied that's true. It's not. The reality is this. The law of attraction is a universal law, which means that it operates all times and in all places. And what it says is, to put it simply, like attracts like. If your belief about your earning capacity is that you're worth $50,000 a year, you simply won't be able to manifest $1 million in a year's time. That's the law of attraction for you. You have to believe that what you're trying to manifest is achievable for you. That's why we spend quite a bit of time in this program looking at the ways in which you can change your limiting beliefs. Do you think Bill Gates or Richard Branson or the founders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, ever doubted their earning capacity. These are some of the richest men in the world. Do you think they ever believed that their worth was around 50,000 uh, a year? No, of course not. The idea is ridiculous. We don't know exactly what they believed about themselves, but it's highly likely there weren't any limitations holding them back from achieving their full potential. So in the course of this program, We'll look at how you can dig out and change the limiting beliefs you hold about yourself. Then you can manifest anything you truly want. But there is one step you have to go through before any of that, deciding what it is you want. This is what people have called goal setting, setting an objective, or visualizing an outcome. Goal setting. Of course, this is the first step in any manifestation. How can you ever get anywhere if you don't know where you're going? So first, we're going to look at how you can decide what you want. Desire. Next comes an examination of your desire for change. Why do you want something? And just how badly do you want it? Do you want it badly enough to make it manifest in your life? In case your desire is a bit, shall we say, lukewarm, we're going to look at how to increase the level of your desire so that you really can get what you want easily, quickly, and effectively. Belief. Then we're going to look at the beliefs which might be stopping you getting it. And then, most importantly, we'll examine how to change them so you really can get what you want. Expectancy. 
And then we look at expectancy. You have to expect these things will appear in your life. And expectancy is different to belief, as we'll see in due course. Visualization. As you may already know, the way you connect with the universe to tell it what you want is through visualization. This is the foundation of all manifestation. What it means is this. You visualize your goal. That is, you form a clear image of it in your mind every day for a few minutes. And you focus exclusively on that goal, imagining it in every detail as though it was already present in your life. And as you do that, you want to generate a lot of feeling of emotional energy, which will propel your desires out towards the universal intelligence. Get the process right, and you'll be amazed at what happens. Get the process wrong, and, well, you'll join all the other people who read the secret and never manifested anything. Fortunately, all the questions you never even knew you needed answering are answered in our chapter on visualization. Making sure you stand the maximum chance of getting exactly what you want, easily, quickly, and effectively. Energy. I already said manifestation requires energy from you. Indeed, the energy you put out into the universe is what drives manifestation. And you can supply energy in several ways. You've heard, quite probably, of the importance of joy and gratitude, of anticipation and excitement in manifesting a different reality. All of that is true. But there are other ways to energize the process, and we'll look at those as well. In fact, there are some incredible shortcuts which make manifestation almost inevitable and almost instant. In fact, some of the techniques I'm going to show you seem almost miraculous in their ability to create a different reality. Action. Let's not overlook the need for action, though. Somehow the universe seems to respond more readily to manifestation if you take action. I don't think the universe is really looking for proof that you're serious about what you want to have in your life, although for all I know it might be. Rather, I think taking action is more of an affirmation for you, not the universe, about the seriousness with which you hold your intention to change your life for the better. But regardless of exactly what's going on, action is necessary. You've probably heard some people say massive action is what will get you your desires. Other people say, no, you only have to take baby steps toward your objective. How on earth can things be so confusing? If manifestation is a simple process, how can people hold such different views? The answer may be that what you believe to be true about the process of manifestation will control how it works for you. Believe you need to take massive action? Then it's true. Believe you need to take baby steps? Then it's true. Anyway, we'll look at this in much more detail later on. And if you're ready to begin, let's start right here, right now.